here at Landscape Partnership in the North York Moors National Park. Uh, just a little bit about the Landscape Partnership. We've been asked to be very quick, so from very brief, that's why. Um, so the Landscape Partnership model um, is based on HLF funding because they're our main contributor. So we look at the natural and the historic environment and how they're impacting the landscape. So our project is focusing on the ironstone mining heritage of the North York Moors National Park. Um, cause most people, I mean, probably present company excluded, come to the National Park and they see these beautiful landscapes and all this wonderful wildlife and actually it's post-industrial landscape and most people don't interpret it about that. So one of our main project aims is trying to just like get the message out there and how this has affected everything over the years. Um, so as part of the scheme of works that we're doing, we started to do some community archaeology excavations. Now, when I started at the park, I was under the impression that like at my interview they said, oh yeah, can you do some community archaeology? Yeah, no problem. I get there and there's not been anything like this done before. So it was a really big learning curve from everything from designing context sheets to buying tools and everything else. But it was really good. And one of the reasons why we try to do that is that the park are really good at engaging volunteers. They have hundreds of volunteers, uh, like thousands of volunteer days, um, but it's mainly for the natural environment because they've been very natural environment focused in the past and there's a very stereotypical type of volunteer being white, middle class and retired. Um, and now the National Park is just on the edge of a big industrial area and the nature of our project relating to the industry so we were trying to engage with these other communities. So the kind of diversity that we're going to look at is like social diversity and looking at the different barriers between those. Um, so this, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is the North York Moors National Park. Um, I'm just going to hand you over to him for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can see there the tiny um, <laughs> National Park there. I um, also want to point out Teesside, which is just up here, and then York, which is down here. So our big thing with the National Park is it's very south-facing in its attitude. So you'll find that a lot of people will go from the National Park to York to do their shopping, the days out, even though Teesside is actually much closer, it's kind of people just don't even consider it. It's kind of there's this invisible barrier there, despite the fact that actually part of the reason the, the park was designated was to provide a green space for the people of Teesside, but there's just somehow it's just been lost, and like I said, this, this invisible barrier has appeared. Um, so I've got a selection of pictures here from some of them are in Teesside, some of them from, from the park. You can see how similar the industrial background was. You can barely tell the difference as to which place that was. So we've got this, this shared history and it's just it's just kind of disappeared a little bit. Like I say, this boundaries formed even though they've got this shared history. So this is the National Park now. You can see it's lovely green, colourful, you've got like a header there in the front. As Maria was saying, it's actually a post-industrial landscape. Um, but the reason it's become the way it is now is because the, the ironstone industry and the other industries um, that were conducted in the park sort of failed like early 20th century at the latest. So most of them actually like failed a little bit earlier than that. So it's had that time for the natural environment to claim claim it back a bit. Um, and with it becoming a national park as well, it's had allowed time for gentrification. A lot of people have holiday homes there, a lot of people retire there. Whereas this is Teesside now. So Teesside, the industry in Teesside is only just failing sort of relatively recently. So only really in the last few decades, which is why it's still so industrial and it was on a much bigger scale than what it was in the park. Maria's fun fact, she loves this. So this is a place called Wilton and apparently it inspired the Blade Runner film. So yeah. that's a true <laughs> story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I will hand you back over to Maria. Thanks. So to try and get people in board, on board with, uh, with volunteering, obviously the, the main thing is kind of just to get the message out there. And that's one thing that the park is actually really good for. So we've got a really big media machine, so we did press releases, it was on the radio, and we ended up doing Look North, which just caused like far too much, it was like too much demand in the end. Um, but one thing we tried to, but a few other things that we're trying to do is we ran our excavations from Tuesday to Saturday. It's not to exclude people that are working because if you, you're not going to take time off to come and do these things so then you're only going to get people who are retired. Um, another thing that they do which I think is absolutely fantastic, so a lot of, well I don't know a lot, but some community archaeology projects and heritage projects, even if you want to volunteer, you have to pay. Now one of the things with Teesside is you get a lot of people who aren't as economically, it's like in the bottom five for GDP in the country. 
Um, so what the National Park actually do, so they will pay your travel expenses um, to get there, so which can include parking, bus fare, train fare, but you've got to get there, which is an, another issue. Um, so we tried to do all these different things to get people to come. Some of them worked really well, some of them didn't. So um, we had, when everything started getting really busy, um, I was on site and um, people in the office, because they were wanting to get people out on site, were like, yeah, you can just come for a day. Now anyone who has ever run one of these things, if you've got like eight new people coming every day, <coughs> like that, that then takes away the enjoyment of the people who are coming regularly. So there's definitely some lessons learned. So even with the best intentions, you still got to manage it properly. Um, so that was a bit of a nightmare. Oh, there we go. I just missed the slide. There's actually one Sorry about this, guys. Um, but yeah, so I did this little... Um, so this is where all the volunteers were from, for Gothland. So as you can see, the message was getting out there, but very few of them were from this Teesside area still. I mean, there was a couple, but we were getting people coming from Bolton, from Sheffield, from Leeds, um, a lot around the park, a load in York, but still not really getting into it properly. But we did manage to get some, and so we'll read you, we'll tell you a bit more about one of them in a minute. Um, as I say, the main barriers to get in was the cost of transport. A lot of people in Teesside don't even know that there is a national park, even though it's like, 15 miles away, They're just it's just not on their radio at all, there's, there's a, totally a barrier. The park have um, diversity, they have a, a diversity officer who works in Middlesbrough and is trying to reach out to all these different communities, but the idea, for some of these communities, the idea of going into the countryside, why would you want to do that? You know, you want to be in the city where the action is, where the money is, you know, it's, it's really, it's this perception of its attitude that's the real big issue but the main thing is is what people think of people in the park and their perceptions of archaeology and what that is and who it's for it's not for them it's you know so why would I even bother thinking about it um, and so this is Tony and um, he is one of our volunteers who started on the community excavation um, he just, it was the first time he'd ever done anything with the park and he's from Eston, which is an old mining community in Middlesbrough and even though he wasn't a miner himself, his family probably were and um, he worked in industry, he used to work for ICI, so very much like an everyday Middlesbrough man. And so we actually asked him why he decided to volunteer with the park, I'm actually going to read out his statement. Now some of his language is a little colourful, it'll be fine before watershed, but it's just to, give, to get you an idea of what people think of the park and of archaeology and why they may not even bother to try and get involved. Um, so yeah, here's Tony's words. Uh, they never seem to associate local history, and especially the industry with archaeology. Most people in my area, the Cleveland Hills and the South Bank of the Tees, have seen the video of Century and Stone. And just as a little note, the video of Century and Stone is on like, the mining history of the area. Um, our relatives would be related to the miners and associated industries in some ways or another. Some of us knew the guys and the stars of the film, but in my experience that's where the interest stops. I must admit that my interest in volunteering stemmed from my love of landscape photography. I saw the volunteering as a tool to get me to the places and subjects I would normally not, not get to see or access. The Land of web pages I first saw made interesting reading. I was not aware of how many sites and groups there was and the work that was going on. The Gothland dig was going to expose some of the old buildings and workings of the old railway from about 1825 through to 1865. The request for volunteers caught my eye in no order because of A, the venue, B, the time of year, summer's dry, C, not too massive a venture for a first timer, D, a chance for me to put something back into the park, and E, a chance to learn something new, especially about archaeological practice. It continues, I thought, yeah, why not, give it a go, could be fun and interesting. So I got myself registered to their online website and initially signed up for two days out of the ten. After all, they may not take to me, and more probable, I may not like any of them. <laughs> I must admit to being a bit apprehensive about the task, especially who and what type of people might be joining me. I bumped into a couple of volunteers while I was out walking some weeks previously, and to be honest, I was not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> they were so far up their own asses. <laughs> A bit Mrs. Bouquet types, so I had my guard up for the first day. 
I was expecting a mix of bearded hippie types along with a few bloody lookalikes and a smattering of student tree hugger lefties and a few octogenarians with nose and nipple piercings. God knows which category I fall into. <laughs> we all headed off to the dig site and were given the background story along with our objectives for the two weeks. A quick demo of the tools we would be using and the obligatory safety talk followed. I've not used a matic before and to watch a young lady demonstrate how to use it correctly was impressive. <laughs> All my expectations were met and more. I got hooked. I initially signed up for two days and stayed for nine and a half. And the rest is history, as they say. I'm still on board and still enjoying it. So, were we a success with Tony? Uh, with Tony, yes. Getting more volunteers involved. It's getting there. It's slow progress, but it's very much in the mindset of the park and the education team are doing their targeting T-side groups as well. But it's, it's a slow process, like anything. Um, do we need to diversify in order to increase diversity? I think so, and I think they've changed definitely with the new people that they've been recruiting in the past few years. They've definitely taken that on mind, people who've been working in that area before. So I myself used to be a middle, um, besides being an archaeologist, I was a youth worker in Middlesbrough, and I think that was one of the reasons why I got my position, because I had sort of the ties in with that community. So they are trying to think about these things. It's just, you know, it's a slow process, but yeah. That's it.